So how do you feel? Uh, I feel pretty good. Um, coming along, I got just some mild pain and stuff like that. I got some swelling in my leg that we're still working on. Uh, my brother and I work every morning, work out, uh, exercise my legs and stuff like that. Still a little bit of swelling from the most recent surgery that I had on my uh, bone graft that went down to my ankle. But uh, otherwise, I feel, feel pretty good. I had a mild, mild surgery on my shoulder. Just Did you? Just a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, rehab is, it was tough for me. Yeah. What, what's it like? Uh, well, rehab right now, it, it, I don't have actual physical therapy going on. Um, because I have zero weight bearing, my therapist... So what uh, do you work out? You just kind of... Yeah, just kind of exercise my leg and uh, move it up and down, both legs actually, just to keep muscle tone in them, keep them moving, uh, keep the stiffness out. Um, besides that, I mean, it's just that, some arm weights to keep my upper body in strength because ultimately I can walk with a walker now, but uh, that walker re re requires me to ultimately lift my entire body weight and I kind of hop from step to step because I can't put any weight on this right foot yet. Talk to me about what your ailments are right now. Because I saw you with the shirt and everything. Yeah, else. yeah, you get uh, I have I still have an open wound uh, on my abdomen here that had a skin graft done for my left leg and uh, basically when I when I went in for uh, when I first went in first day I had a surgery or I don't I was unconscious at this point so I don't even recall it. This is what I've heard from my brother and my father and uh, um, but the first day they had to do a surgery and then they had to go back in a second time and when they went back in the second time the swelling was so great that uh, they couldn't get me closed back up um, so I still have an open wound on my abdomen that they put a skin graft in that they reassured that that skin graft would grow and ultimately it would just fill back into where my skin used to be on my abdomen here but uh it's science fiction it is it was it was pretty neat the way they they kind of pieced humpty dumpty back together again here you a religious man yes i am yep southern baptist and uh go to chestnut ridge baptist church my pastor and youth pastor actually just left uh about a half hour before you guys showed up and uh <clears throat> Oh, absolute, absolute miracle that uh, all the prayers, I got so many, I've heard of uh, people all across the country. I had people out in Colorado that I knew personally, their churches were praying for me, people in South Carolina that I didn't even know. Friends of mine were passing through a town and they had heard the South Carolina small town uh, had heard about this accident, this tragedy and their entire church was praying for me. But ultimately, at one point, uh, my father and my brother had gotten the news that the doctors didn't think that I would live for a week to three weeks is what they gave the outcome. Um, and then literally from day to day, my numbers would, would improve by about 50%, and the doctors admitted that it was a miracle. I, I didn't do it. The Lord did it. The, uh, all the prayers, all the fighting by my brother, my father, fighting with the doctors to do whatever they could to uh, take every step, every, every, everything, every ounce of their body they put into fighting for my life. I read something about your brother Todd when he saw you being taken to the hospital, yelled, you keep fighting. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was, uh, that was when I was first taken in from the scene to the first hospital because uh, from what I understand, life flight couldn't fly on the date of my uh, accident at that time. So I was actually transported to a local hospital, O'Leary Memorial Hospital, and that's where my brother was waiting. And uh, words mean to you? Oh, that's, that, was, that was the key to our lives. I mean, we've always, that's the way we were raised. My father always raised us to keep fighting, never quit. Basically, it was, the saying was, if you quit once, you're going to quit the rest of your life. So that's oh. the way it went. Keep fighting your entire life. In this case, that was literal. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was right there on the edge. Um, do you remember the accident? Uh, I remember the accident in great detail, much of which I, I don't care to share. I would only share that with very close family members. Were you in a coma for some time? Yes. Uh, approximately, I'm not sure that it was called a coma. I don't, I'm not sure. Todd, can you elaborate more on that? or? It was an induced coma, okay. Uh, about three and a half weeks is what I was told. I had Do you have any memory of not a single recollection. Uh, there were certain things that I was told that I do have vague thoughts of. Um, people would ask me to do certain things, and I can recall just like ounces of just little tiny minuscule pieces of that. Share with me your Um, basically it was, uh, I was trying to communicate and I had no idea why I couldn't communicate verbally. Um, and the nurses would give me a board to try and write or, uh, they actually had letters and they wanted me to spell it out. And even holding a pen or my finger out to point to those letters to spell out a word was so difficult because in those three weeks I had lost so much muscle tone and what did you say? I don't even recall. Can't recall. It was still, even though I, the clarity wasn't so perfect that uh, um, I guess one of the first things I had asked was uh, what had happened with my wife and my son. I had been told at the scene that my son had passed by a good Samaritan, um, which I had recently received his name, which I had grossly uh, misquoted his name in a newspaper and that that uh, that journalist had actually received a call and I've tried to make contact with him I'm awaiting a, a return phone call from him and I hope that he would uh, give me a call back because I would like to thank him for everything that he had done at that scene so when you um Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, you knew it was bad. Yeah. Did you know, did you know it was as bad as it was? Yeah, you know, I, I knew even before I had gone into the hospital that it was bad. Um, I actually didn't know how much was wrong with my leg until I had come to. Before I'd come to, I'd, I knew that something bad was wrong when they were extricating me from the car. Um, and had I could feel I could feel a major rush of blood down my leg, and it was outside of my leg. It wasn't the normal numbness coming to. It was on the exterior of my leg, and I knew something was bad wrong with that. But I had no idea that when I came to that I had scars all up and down my leg, and that's when uh, Todd and my father had told me that uh, I had broken femurs, broken tibias, broken ankles. Um, when you're as busted up as you were, mm -hmm. do you have time, are you thinking, what do you think about? Are you thinking about your family in the car? Are you thinking about yourself? Are you thinking about it all? Thought about my thought about my family and uh, once I learned that my, uh, my wife and my son were with the Lord, I was pretty comfortable with that and then it was concentration on uh, my daughter Danielle, making sure she was getting better, and uh, at that point I had heard nothing but fabulous things about my daughter getting better, and uh, so then I just started concentrating on myself and making sure I was getting better at that point because I needed to be there for my daughter. I was, I'm, for this from Wheeling, I was raised Catholic, St. Yes. Michael's Church, I mm -hmm. was confirmed in all the steps of the, sure. of the Catholic Church. Uh, I consider myself relatively religious. My mm -hmm. grandmother is very religious. Yes. I still have a difficult time coping with, with death and the passing of people. Okay. Um, has that, how is that, that struggle between acceptance and, uh, was it, because you said it so, you know, my, my family's with God. Right. Yeah, I've, I mean, you know, in my religion, we believe that once you're saved of your, once you've repented of your sins, that you will be with God and that you, 
that it is a glorious thing, that it is much better there than it is here with us, uh, here on earth. And uh, I, I firmly believe that both my son and my wife were saved, and uh, I firmly believe that they're with the Lord, and they're in a much better place than I am. I'm very comfortable with that. You face with such a challenge and test mm -hmm. like this. Um, have there been glimpses of, of some anger? Have there been glimpses of... I've not concentrated on the anger. Um, there are times. Uh, it, it was a long time. Todd never, Todd never revealed to me exactly who who the suspect was in, in, this, uh, in this crime. Um, he had let me know that the other person involved in the other vehicle was uh, a sex offender and a parole violator, is what he had heard. And uh, I never knew of his name, didn't want to inquire about his name because of where I work. And uh, I figured that I probably had some knowledge of that person. Uh, it was not until later, once I was signing some insurance paperwork, that his name appeared on the insurance paperwork that he was, uh, that, that was the person. And I, I did recognize the name. Just from? From work. Yeah. Um, you never had an encounter with him in the past? Or did you? Oh, I've, yeah, I've had numerous encounters with him in the past. But anger-wise, uh, um, I wouldn't say that I've concerned myself with that. I'm still in my rehabilitation phase here, and I concentrate on me and myself and Danielle. What do you remember about your, your wife and your son? What memories do you cherish? There's too many good memories. Too many good memories. My wife was, even the day of the accident, earlier in the day, uh, her humor always, it was an offbeat humor. It wasn't a, I'm a comedian type of person. Earlier in the day, there was uh, a storm that had rolled through. I was outside working, and I, uh, it had started raining, so I'd shifted from one task to another task. Uh, basically, I was trying to drain some storm water from that storm. It was just a steady downpour, and uh, the newscaster, she had turned on the news, and she'd come to the back patio door, and she slid the d patio door open, and she said, Hey, Tom, just to let you know, there's no rain in the forecast, and it's steady. I, I'm completely soaked head to toe, and uh, I said, Thanks, hon, and... Uh, she said, why don't you come in out of the rain? I said, no, this is perfect. It's nice and it's a warm rain and I don't mind. I said, I'm, I'm going to come in a little bit. And uh, I mean, that was the type of humor that she had. Um, loving. She would give everything of herself. Everything of herself to, uh, to her family. Um, my son... That boy was, uh, he was special. He was my little man. He, uh, listen, that boy would listen intently on every small detail that you would tell him. Didn't like to be wrong. Didn't like to be scolded. Was very, very much, uh, a very good boy. He it was never in trouble. Good, good grades. Um, How much do you need them right now? Oh, I, I'd give everything that, everything that I had to get them back. like humor is there that's the one thing that seems to connect people like that I, I think that's that's interesting that that's the first memory you talked about how do you get how do you get how do you get through this 
I mean, you're, you're a man of the law. You've put your life on the line for people for years. How do you get through this? I just have to rely on, uh, rely on my religion to continue to carry me through. Uh, family. My family is a huge crutch to me right now. Um, my brother and sister-in-law have opened up their house and basically his manpower has extended extra hours and uh, done extra work uh, for him that he is able to stay here with me ultimately. Uh, My mother and father are there every day. I have aunts and uncles that are over my mom and dad's house cooking for the week, so my brother and sister-in-law are not overwhelmed with the care that they have to give to myself and my daughter. And uh, uh, friends, the community, I mean, every minute, I, usually my phone is going off nonstop with people that want to do something for me. I have friends at work that are constantly dreaming up new tasks that they want to accomplish for me. Um, I mean, that's that. And ultimately, uh, continuing to get back on my feet. And uh, Danielle and I will be going to some counseling to make sure that you know, have long-lasting effects from from this tragedy. My mother, <clears throat> excuse me, she uh, was very close to her grandma who passed away just before her wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and she was, uh, it was terrible for her for a decade. Yeah. But she said during that time, she could still feel her, her grandmother's presence. And that sure. She would visit her in ways that she couldn't explain. Mm -hmm. um, are you a person who believes in that? Or have you I've I've not felt anything like that yet. I wait for it. I've had dreams, dreams about uh, both my wife and son. But as I explained to my brother, it, there are times that it seems that as I get close to my wife or my son in those dreams, it would I would kind of just all of a sudden wake up and uh, I told as I told him, I said it's one of those where. It's a good dream, and then all of a sudden, when you get to the point that oh, it's going to be great now. But I've not had I've not had that uh, felt that presence yet. Kind of dream you'd like to linger in for a little while. Sure, sure, and it always seems that I wake up at the most unfortunate moment when I'm getting close to making contact with them. What do you think that means? I'm not sure. Hopefully a counselor will be able to help me answer that. How do you plan on keeping your the memory of, of your wife and of your son All fresh right. and, and close to you? Oh, that's that's simple. They had both of them had too much impact. That's not something that I could I could ever forget. Um, with my family and friends, my my brother is a a picture fanatic. My brother and sister in law are both picture fanatics with a love they like to display. Um, Do you ever catch yourself just staring at those pictures? Oh, absolutely, all the time. The one picture that my brother always refers to is a picture of him and my son fishing. Uh, the four of us, the four four Tomaszewskis, my father. Uh, myself, my brother, and Tommy were all fishing partners. Uh, many tournaments. Some we won, some we didn't. Uh, and as Todd refers to it, it's fishing, not catching. So, and Tommy was one of those that was out there with the best of us. If we weren't, if we weren't catching, we were fishing. And there were a lot of those slow fishing moments where you're just roasting out of that boat. And that there's a picture right there that I'm staring at right ahead of me of my brother fishing with my son and there's nothing better than that. I love my brother so much and at that moment he was he was teaching Tommy what to 
what to feel on that fishing pole. What, when did, and I, I, another memory that I have, uh, we went on vacation down to Florida, and my wife booked a private charter for my son and I, and we went down there, and I didn't catch a single fish, and my son, I think he caught six, six fish, and I mean, he easily outfished me. He could feel it, no problem, and I, I had no feel at all for those bites, but that uh, was another memory that just came to me that just back back to those back to those times go back to those times and uh, think about those moments like I'm one of those that you know it was Dan it was always one of those where we talked about it in church all the time, how life is there and it can be taken away in just a split second. And uh, you never really think about it in that effect, that your time could be up at any given moment. And uh, it's one of those that you were talking about redundancy and we talk about it so much at church and it never really clicks in until something like this happens. And it's, I mean, it was literally um, fractions of a second. That one moment we were coming home from a nice trip to the lake, and, uh, and the next we were clinging to life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. All right.